Hello everyone, I'm Bad Pan, a bot who has a dot challenger with red headlight. Welcome to part 3 of creating the first to follow dialogue system in Unity. In this video, we'll cover how to create a smooth transition when the character looks at us and not just snap his head at us. And we also will create the actual dialogue system in this video. This video will be put inside a playlist that covers Unity tips and tricks. I actually used some of these functions in my own game. Also, I published my game, it's a retro horror game. You can check it out in the link in the description. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe for more Unity tips and tricks. With all those being said, let's begin. So for the first part of the video, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna fix the when the person we're talking to looks at us I don't want the head to snap to look at us I want it to move slowly until it is looking at us to actually do that we're gonna go ahead and open up our look at script I added these two which will create the function I'm gonna walk you through it it's gonna take our look at it's gonna make this start from the look at and change it until it's reached one and it's gonna increase it by two each second this time that delta time increases it according to the time and not according to the FPS or the frames per second so for when he is looking at us we want it to start from look weight and end at 1 and for when he looks away we want it to start from look weight and end it at 0 and what we want to do is we can delete it we can just cut the, these two we can just cut these two you can cut it by ctrl x or right click and cut and we can actually uh, put them down here inside if ik active is equal to true we can just paste it here with ctrl v or right click paste so that's actually the function. Let's go ahead. We can go ahead and check it out. So as you can see, when I talk to him, so as you saw, his head moved slowly to look at us. As you see, so for the next part of the video, we're going to be creating the talk function of the fears to fathom. We're gonna create a two choice script that we're gonna choose, for example, choice number one. And it's gonna give us an answer of number one. And when we click on choice number two, it's gonna give us another answer. Let's go ahead and create it. We need to right click on our canvas. We need to add a raw image. Go to UI, raw image. I'm gonna, you know, anchor it to the lower side of the screen. So I'm gonna click on this anchor, hold alt, and I'm gonna press this one. When I go to scene, I can press on this 2D. So put, to put it in 2D view, press T to go to this tab and I can you know move it a little bit up. If you can actually move it, just press Z so you would be able to move it again. So I'm just going to place it like right here, a little bit up. I think that's enough. Then I'm going to you know, make it hold Alt and increase it on this side. And you know make it like this. Yeah, I think that's enough. I'm going to make it black. I'm going to make it alpha like, like right like this. You can increase its, you know, place to make it like this, make this much shorter, make it longer. It's all about you. I'm just, you know, telling you the function. You can make it more beautiful. This is not going to be a beautiful thing because it is just a function. I'm just going to tell you the function. You guys can actually make it beautiful yourself. We're going to right click on our canvas, create a UI legacy text. I'm going to put it at half, half, make it white. Again, I'm going to you know, click on this, hold alt and anchor it to the lower side of the screen. So it also is anchored to the lower side of the screen when we make it smaller and bigger. Let's go to scene 2D view. We can, I can just, you know, put the text Put it like right here, you know, increase it until it is like here, half, half, and that's fine. Put it up and half and make it like 25. You can give it bold. You can give it another font if you want. I'm just going to use the normal font. You can give it the VCR font, which uh, I use for my own game. I think this amount of text is enough. <laughs> there is no sentence like this long, so that seems enough. Okay, the next thing I'm going to create is the choices. Usually there are two choices in Fears to Fathom. So I'm going to create two choices. If you want three choices, you can create those as well. So what I want to do is I'm going to go to this text. I'm going to name it to talk text. Right click on it and duplicate. I'm going to name it choice one. I'm going to go to scene. I'm going to you know, place it like right down here, make it smaller. I think that's enough. It's going to be like this. Just put it at center and put it at left and, you know, move it a little bit like here. So that's for choice one. You can duplicate it again with control D and, you know, put the other one like here and you call this one choice two. This one is actually choice one. So when we talk to him, text is going to be written here and we're going to select one of these to actually select our choice. So let's go ahead and give them a button value. So for choice one, to add, to make it a button, you're just gonna click on this add, you're gonna select it, you're gonna click on this add component and give it a button. As you see, this is button, you can click on button and it is a button now. For the normal color, I want it to be like yellowish or something. And when I hover over it, I want it to be a little bit dimmer. And when I press it, I want it to be like orange. 
and then it is selected. I want it to be, you know, a little bit like reddish. And I can just, you know, give this button value to this choice number two as well. So I'm just gonna right click on this button, copy component, and I'm gonna select this choice two. I'm gonna right click on text, paste component as new. So then now that is added to choice number two as well. But what you have to do is you're just gonna have to change this target graphic from choice one to choice two. So you can drag and drop this choice two to here. You're gonna right click and you're gonna select this one and select choice number two. I wanna put these choices inside a parent of choices. So when I need to activate these choices, I just activate the parent of it. So to put them under a parent, I'm just gonna right click on this canvas, give it an empty object, so it empty. I'm just gonna name it choice parent so i know it's a choice parent be sure to put it at zero 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 then i'm going to select both of them and i'm just going to drag and drop it onto this choice parent and when i deactivate this choice parent both of these choices are deactivated so that was for the choice what i want to do is when i want to talk i just activate this raw image i'm just going to call it talk panel so i activate this talk panel i write on this and i choose from these so we can go ahead and do it let's open up our cam interact right uh, when we go and talk to our mannequin when we look at him, we can look at him by this. We're gonna wait for one second, for example, or two seconds, or one second, and we can start talking. To talk to him, I first have to deactivate my uh, FPS controller so I cannot move the camera. If you're using Cinemachine POV as your virtual camera, you just have to deactivate your Cinemachine virtual camera. You can easily deactivate that by, you know, saying player vcam.enabled equal to false. But I don't have that Cinemachine POV set right now and I don't have to do this. I just deactivate my FPS controller and my camera movement will be deactivated as well. First, I'm gonna say FPS controller dot enabled equal to false. I want to activate my cursor, so I'm just gonna say cursor. So I'm just gonna say cursor dot lock state equal to cursor lock mode dot none, which is gonna unlock our cursor. Then we're just gonna say cursor dot visible equal to true, which is gonna make our cursor visible. Then I'm gonna activate my talk panel. I don't have the talk panel right now, so I'm just gonna go up ahead. I'm gonna create these down here. I'm just gonna say talk. I'm gonna put the talk panel right here. I'm just gonna say public game object i'm gonna say talk panel that's how i did it in my own game then i'm gonna say public game object choice pack so i can activate my choice pack for the writing part you know writing life is to fathom i have a video on that you can click on top of your screen right now to get to it over the link in the description you can watch that video it's actually i think it was actually my first ever youtube video so uh, for that i'm just gonna need a text file so i'm just gonna say public text i'm gonna name it subtext if you've watched my previous videos, you know I always name my text subtext string. I'm gonna call it holder. We're just gonna hold our sentence. I'm gonna need a float. I'm gonna call it time. I'm gonna make it equal to 0.5f, which is gonna be the time spent between uh, writing each character of a word. For example, it's gonna write A, it's gonna wait 0.05f seconds, then it's gonna write B. You'll better understand it in the following minutes, so no worry on that. So right down here, I have to activate my talk panel, then I'm gonna talk. So I'm just gonna say talk panel that said active equal to true. Then uh, we're gonna talk to the mannequin. So what we're gonna do now is uh, we're gonna say subtext the text equal to empty if we are talking we're gonna say me here with this one so we are saying holder is gonna be the sentence it's gonna be written partly so i'm just gonna say hello are you okay then we're gonna say for each character i'm gonna call it c inside holder so for each one of these characters, for example, H, E, L, for each one of these characters, we're gonna write them partly and letter by letter. So we're just gonna say subtext.text plus equal C. So C is gonna be, this character is gonna be added to our subtext. Then we're gonna give it a time. So we're just gonna say yield, return new, wait for seconds. We're gonna wait for time, which is 0.05F seconds as we created before. So that's actually very easy. That's how I did it in my own game. That's how you type text partly inside with the legacy text. I'm gonna say when I press left mouse click after we're done talking, we're gonna continue to our next dialogue. So how to implement that is actually very easy. It's exactly how I did it in my own game. Uh, we're gonna create another enumerator. I'm gonna call it mouse press. So enumerator, I'm gonna call it mouse press. And inside here, we're just gonna write while this input that get mouse button down mouse zero so when we click on the left mouse click we're just gonna say yield return now it's gonna return now value as we created that we go up here and we're gonna say yield 
return we say you'll return and we're gonna call our mouse press so we're just gonna say mouse press we're gonna wait until a value is returned from our mouse press and when is the value returned from mouse press when we click on this left mouse so when we click on this left mouse we're gonna continue going down here and doing this stuff so after that i'm just gonna you know we can just copy this one so control c control v here now the mannequin will talk and he's gonna say yeah i'm fine then i'm gonna again say yield return mouse press then again he's gonna say or you lost he's gonna give you an answer then we're gonna wait for uh, yield return new wait for seconds two seconds or one second then i'm gonna activate the choices pack so i'm just gonna say choice pack dot selective true we don't need these here right here we have to do them inside an, another enumerator because they are for when we are finished talking we're gonna create two other enumerators for when we click on each one of those choices so i'm just gonna say enumerator choice one co which stands for coroutine i'm gonna go ahead and create another one i'm gonna call it enumerator choice to co which stands for coroutine as well so that was it so for choice one we're just gonna say you can just you know copy this one and paste it there and just copy this one put it here and right now me for example we for example say for the first answer we're gonna say no i'm a local i'm just gonna make it short so you guys can actually understand the function and for the choice number two we're just gonna say yes i will ask for help later so he doesn't, you know, continue talking to us. And after that, you can create another enumerator. We can call it the final enumerator, which is going to reset everything and, you know, reset the talking. And we're going to add these to them. What I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to create another enumerator. I'm going to call it final CO, final coroutine. And in here, we can just cut these and paste them here. As easy as that. And so here we have to reset everything. So we're just going to say talk panel that set active false talk panel should be off our fps controller need to be enabled true our uh, choices pack should be disabled choice pack that set active false we also have to you know empty our subtext subtext of text equal to empty so no text is shown there and just add yield return null here so it doesn't give you guys on any any errors because it is an enumerator it has to return a value just add this one inside both of these choices start coroutine final coroutine you just copy this and paste it here as well so that was the choice pack so but before we can call these enumerators we have to link them to the buttons to actually link them to the buttons we have to create two different public voids and we're gonna attach these voids to those buttons then i'm gonna attach the voids to these enumerators as well so these voids are like a bridge between this enumerator and the buttons so i'm just gonna say public void choice one void you can create another one public void choice to void and that's very easy so choice one we're just gonna say start coroutine choice one coroutine be careful about the parentheses and for the choice two void we're just gonna say start coroutine choice two coroutine so right now we're gonna go ahead and select our choice one button we're gonna go to its unclick event we're gonna press on this plus then we're gonna give it unclick event so we're gonna give it our cam interact script our cam interact script is actually attached to our camera so we're gonna go to choice script and drag and drop our camera to this section we're gonna click on this circle and find your camera i'm gonna click on this no function i'm gonna find my cam interact first to fathom script then i'm gonna find choice one boy this is it be careful you have to make the voids public so you can access them from outside the code from here then i'm going to do the same thing for choice number two instead of one i'm just going to give it the public void choice two void so this is it so for the start i'm going to deactivate this one deactivate my talk panel i'm going to go and select my cam in a rag and i'm going to give them a value it needs a talk panel i'm going to drag and drop my talk panel it needs a choice pack i'm going to give it a choice pack it needs a subtext subtext is actually our talk text i'm going to give that as well we're going to give these choices the names the namings for the choice one i'm just gonna say i'm a local you can put place you know like one here you can say yeah i'm lost so i want the choices pack to disappear when i click on one of the choices so i'm just gonna say choice pack that's set active false you can just copy it and put place it for choice number one as well you have to put it on top of the subtext.txt because we first want to deactivate the choices then we want to write so you can go ahead and check it out hello are you okay yeah i'm fine are you lost we're gonna say no i'm a local 
it's gonna wait for three seconds it's gonna re reset everything so we can go ahead and ask him again hello are you okay yeah i'm fine are you lost this time i'm gonna say yes i will ask for help later it's gonna wait for two seconds and it's gonna reset. So that was it for the end of the video. This video actually covered the dialogue system for the fears to fathom. It was a very simple function of it. I know you guys can actually make it even better. You can make it more beautiful. This was just a function and sorry if it was not beautiful. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, the like would be amazing. You can subscribe to see more contents like this. You can also comment anything. I would be really happy to answer them. You can ask me anything. You can, you know, give different opinions. You can even tell me what to cover in the next video maybe. I'm gonna go do something for the end of the video as I did in all my videos. So this is what I created for the end of the video. I hope you guys or gals like it. Hope all the best for you, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.